from the history of art department at the University of Michigan. And you're probably wondering why somebody from the history of art is here um, today. Uh, I'm, uh, today we're going to talk about interdisciplinary exchange of information in imaging uh, with digital collections. Um, but I kind of had a meandering path um, to how I got to this point. I started off working in uh, historic house museums as a project curator, so I'm familiar with collections and cataloging and working with large masses of um, uh, collection items and artifacts and organizing them. Um, and that led to archival photography working with um, um, papyrus, rare books, artifacts, um, and things like that at the University of Michigan in the photography for the, for the digital library. And ultimately, that ended up to where I am now at the History of Art Department, coordinating digital projects, digital um, uh, digitization projects. So, um, part of what I did at the um, um, digital library was photograph fish for um, the um, on my computer. I wonder why this isn't working. Um, uh, at the Museum of Zoology. So some of the photographs you see here were taken probably, I need to admit this, 12 years ago. So we did um, a combination of wet dry photography at that time of the fish. We would take fish out of the jars, set them up, and then brush them with water, wait for the water to evaporate enough, and then um, shoot the shots um, after the specular highlights were gone. Um, and I'm excited to see the photography that's going to be demonstrated here today because it looks much cooler than what we did back then. Um, so, but this is not what I'm going to talk about today. I just included these photographs to show that there is a direct connection between what I used to do and um, why I'm here today. Um, the path that um, I took to where I am now led to an interesting perspective of photography and um, cross-disciplinary capture of different types of items, the different kinds of setups, the different workflows that are necessary for um, uh, different specimens, different artifacts, different sizes of materials, different types. Um, and that um, has you know, led to an interesting perspective. And so last fall, um, the Dean of Special Collections at LSA started up a task force on looking at imaging across um, LSA museums and collections. And I was fortunate enough to chair that committee. Um, and what we did is we looked at imaging from um, every aspect of imaging, from the um, purpose of why it was being done, to how it was being captured, to what was being captured, to the types of equipment that were being used, to um, how it was being delivered, who the audience was, um, and ultimately um, how it was being managed and served and archived, everything about it. Um, and the groups that were involved in that were the um, Museum of Anthropology, the Herbarium, History of Art, the Kelsey Museum of Archaeology, uh, the Museum of Natural History, which is formerly known as the Exhibit Museum, the Museum of Paleontology, the Museum of Zoology, which includes, as you know, many different divisions and types of specimens, birds, fishes, um, uh, insects, which Mark O'Brien took that picture, which is beautiful, a very dragonfly, um, mammals, mollusks, and um, reptiles and amphibians, or herbs. Um, uh, and so you can imagine all the different kinds of material and specimens and artifacts and archival material that are involved with all these different types of groups. And at first glance, it may seem like there aren't a lot of commonalities across this whole group of departments and museums and collections. But what we found is that um, there are a lot of commonalities despite these seeming differences. Now, I know you can't read what's on this chart, but this table um, compiles all the information that I just talked about, from um, the types of specimens to how things are captured, to the kinds of equipment used, to who the audience is, to how it's delivered, everything involved. And the green is an on-off indicator to um, whether or not something is, um, where there's a material present, whether something is being, there's activity in that area. 
So just by looking at um, the color that's on the chart, you can see that there's a lot of commonality across all these different units. So we discovered, we met just four times, and then I went around and interviewed <coughs> each, each member of the committee and in their unit and looked at um, what they had with their setup in the different um, museums. And um, we discovered that there was a lot of crossover of equipment. People used the same kind of equipment despite the different um, um, specimens that they were capturing. Um, there were a lot of archives in all the different areas, so every area had slides, every area had paper items that they needed to capture photographs. Um, and um, there are a lot of areas where um, there were certain expertise in one area as opposed to another. So there are things that we can certainly learn from each other. Now how that's going to happen, that's, um, that's what comes next. Um, we, um, one of the great things that came about with this is there's potential to have a shop talk group that can meet regularly and just informally share information. Um, and that's something that has already occurred. Um, we discovered that some units, when they needed specialty equipment, found it on campus. So paleontology and the Kelsey Museum of Zoology discovered that the dentistry museum, or the dentistry the school of the dentistry, had um, a portable CT um, scanner that they could use to, for their specimens. So they used that um, for short run projects. Um, and that's something that you wouldn't typically think of to go to the school of dentistry to, um, to find equipment to borrow. Um, the library also has equipment that um, would be used for specialty items such as a large format map scanner. Um, that was something that some departments within this group hadn't thought of. So that exchange of information was very valuable um, to different areas because not only can be used for maps, but aerial photographs or plans or you know, um, things from one, one collection to the next. Um, the um, three main areas that um, come out from this, as I already mentioned, the sharing of information is very important. Sharing of resources um, is the second, which you know, we talked about with um, um, the possibility of sharing <coughs> um, equipment and things like that. Um, there is also um, potential to investigate whether or not it's um, feasible or even a good idea to set up an imaging lab for um, certain areas to share. But the problem with that, the biggest challenge, is that there's always the issue of ownership. Um, the College of LSNA is decentralized, so when it comes to something like that, there's the question of who owns it, who maintains it, which is a huge issue. Who upgrades the software? Who makes sure that this is working? Who makes sure the computers can be working when you know, five people from different departments come in and, you know, um, may not be taking care of it the way that the person who, uh, if it was in their office, would be taking care of it. Um, so there are challenges, you know, to be had. And um, a lot of it. Um, so that's something that, those are questions that come about, but it certainly was um, our recommendation that further investigation should be um, um, should be taken and um, conducted um, for professional support for all of these areas, for IT, for digital preservation, for imaging and or um, equipment um, to support all of these units. One of the biggest complaints with, um, I shouldn't say complaint, one of the biggest um, challenges that the collection managers faced was that they, um, you know, came in and were working with um, databases and working with taking care of the collections, and that's where their expertise was. And they found that the digital imaging projects were tacked onto their job. So they didn't necessarily have training in those areas. So the, the, um, the, um, one of the benefits that would come from sharing of information would be we could have the best practices um, platform where we could share things across the whole um, and have training material out there or have someone that could go around and share information. Um, 
Let's see. So moving on to services, there's also um, one of the um, services on campus that most everybody in the group partakes in is using the digital library. Um, the University of Michigan has a very strong presence with the digital library on campus. Um, they not only host text material, but they host um, image collections. They have 96 image collections that are served through the library. And what they do is they take um, take your databases, work with the departments, and work that with your images and serve them online. Um, the History of Art Department has been using their services since the mid 90s, um, and um, that's our that's our main um, method of delivering images to um, researchers, basically. Um, and the Fish Department, or the Museum of Zoology, this is just, this is just, um, yeah, this is a little, Museum of Zoology has 11 collections up there. Um, and um, here you can see the fish um, specimen of the image collection. Um, so how many people here have digital libraries at their institution? Do you partake in their services? Yes, no? No. No? No. no. I would really encourage you to, um, to contact them and set up an appointment and go see what they have to offer. Um, because they really can help you out with um, getting your images out there. Um, I, but with... Um, with, with specimens, you often have um, databases that you are, um, national databases that you're all contributing to, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think that um, maybe there are other ways that the libraries can help you out in addition to those, those national databases. Um, yes, another um, service on campus that um, most everybody partakes in is um, Deep Blue, and this is a repository that's an archival repository for research and any kind of multimedia that um, um, is generated by departments, faculty, individuals, and or, and or the whole department. Um, so you can put individual items up there or whole collections, and um, they guarantee that it's archived and that it has a permanent URL so that you can rely on it for citations um, from, um, and that it can be migrated from one format to the next as things progress through time. Um, so all the departments partake in that um, through the museum astrology. Um, and one of the very valuable things that, was, um, that each department relies on heavily is um, School of Information Interns. I know at university, or at the um, History of Art Department, we um, wouldn't be able to get our cataloging done on our projects if we didn't have interns from the School of Information to handle that data, to organize collections, and to catalog those items, to do the research on the images. Um, so I think this term we have five interns from the School of Information. Um, so that's something that is a resource that if your school has, if your institution has a school of information, um, um, I would encourage you to, um, to investigate any um, internship offerings that they have. So that's, uh, that's all I have to share.